your people who got into your care, Lord Almighty oh God, that you give them a heart to God of pleasure, and you may be able to go on and hear your word, that they have a good plan to go on to which your seed, that, that is your word, God, be able to grow and manifest in their life, that Lord, all glory to you, Lord, you must follow, for it's not by mind, not by our power, but by your spirit, oh God, that has made them go, oh God, and I pray that your word, that through faith, Heavenly Father, will liberate them from all oppression. For he said, whoever is born of God will overcome the world. Are you aware? Will help them with God that through faith overcome the world and establish your hands with them. May only forever be glorified and adore in the name of Jesus as you pray. Amen. 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 So we thank God Almighty for such a moment like this with him. Once again, it's desert evangelism, the road less traveled. Hallelujah. And I know we've got our pen and our Notebooks ready uh, to, to 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 enter the word of God. Mm. He said, "Be like a Berean Christian who, after went back and searched the mm. scriptures. It's very important to search the scriptures, as when mm. God reveals Himself unto you more and more. For He said, His word is sharper than a two-edged uh, sword, which that is true. Mm. Every bone and every soul have it for us this moment." So we thank God Almighty. We are going to delve straight into it. And for the previous week, we have been looking at Revelations chapter 2, 1 to 7. And we are looking at remembering our first love. And uh, we have been based on this scripture throughout for, I think, about three weeks now. And I know uh, if you have not yet uh, gone through it, uh, I encourage you to go back to our YouTube page, Christ to Demar Church. Uh, Toronto, if you find all those videos there, then you can sit down and study to show yourself approved of God as well and, and to learn from it and uh, recap yourself with what you're about to do this moment uh, in the presence of God Almighty. I encourage you to do so and, to, uh, and study and uh, be, 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 be ready for the coming of our Christ Jesus and know more about him as well. Hallelujah. Mm-hmm. So, Brother Isaac, mm-hmm. uh, uh, will you do us the honor of giving us a recap? Of, of what we did and what you have been doing throughout the whole week. God bless you. Okay. And, uh, and before uh, I, I, I go straight into it, I, I, I would like to reiterate what you, you were saying about, you know, um, getting our pens and pencils to put down things for our remembrance. As you always say, a shorter pencil is better than a long memory. It, it is, you know, even as Christ, I, when we go through the scriptures, we, we saw that when the Lord God Almighty was talking to his people, the prophet, he always encouraged them to put things down, to put down what they see and what they hear, to serve yes. as a remembrance, you know, yes. to, to, for, for them to know what he has said and what he's, uh, he's going to do and all that stuff. And, yes. and even as we come to the, the, the New Testament, we, we, we see that um, the Holy Spirit is all about revealing great truths unto us. The kingdom of God, as believers, we can have dominion based on the light that is revealed unto us. Yes. And the light is Jesus Christ. The light is the word of God. And so when God wants to do great things in, in, in our life as individuals and as a body of Christ, we, we see that he shortens the distance between us and the light. And so we read Isaiah chapter 60, verse 1. He says, arise for your light has come. You see? And so the, the word of God, as Jesus Christ is, said, is, will set us free in every aspect of our life. And the Apostle Paul, through the Holy Spirit, told us the word of God or the gospel is the power of God unto salvation. It's not only the power of God unto salvation, but it's the power of God unto our true freedom in life. It's the power of God unto our peace. It's the power of God unto our blessing unto our healing, unto every blessing that the Lord God Almighty through Jesus Christ has blessed us in the heavenly realms with. It comes through the word. And therefore, we must pay attention to the word. And this week, even as I was meditating on some of these things, you know, what the, 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 the Lord through the Holy Spirit taught me was, you know, just as in the beginning, the evil one 
causes Adam and Eve to undermine the word of God unto them. Likewise, that's all that he is doing among the body of Christ, to undermine and to ignore, uh, neglect and ignore the word of God, the word that has power for our salvation and every good thing, to make us wise, build us up and give us the inheritance in Christ. And so it is important, we must not be ignorant of this fact that we pay attention to some of these teachings and we put things down to serve as remembrance whenever we, we want to go back to it. And so that, 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 that's the little I can say to back what you were, were saying, because Amen. at times we might, we, might, we might think that we are just saying it for a joke or something, but yeah. it's, a, it's a serious statement that you, you are making for us to, to put things down. And, and so straight from that, we, we will move on onto um, our topic or our teaching for the past three weeks as we began. And hopefully by the grace of God, through the leadership of the Holy Spirit, we'll finish it today. We've been talking mainly um, from the book of Revelation, chapter two, verse one to seven. And um, the main point that we are highlighting on is remembering our first love. As Jesus Christ pointed out to the church of Ephesus mm -hmm. that they are doing great things. He commended them for doing all the things that are good that they are doing. But he said one thing, one thing I have against you, that you have forgotten or you, are, you have left your first love. And therefore, you should remember where you left and repent and do the first works. And so we, we, we saw that the, the first love that Jesus Christ was pointing out was the early love, the, 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 the passion, the zeal that they first, they once had when they encounter his love. When they come to accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, that passion, that zeal, you know, they were burning. Their, their spiritual fire was burning. They were ready to, to leave everything, you know, to, to, to not let anything come between them and their relationship and fellowship with him. But we see that as time goes on, as times went on, and they have they have fought spiritual battles, you know, as the Bible says, you know, they 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 have tested false prophets, you know, and found them to be liars. They 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 they, they have established churches, you know, they are overseeing other ministries, they are building buildings and doing all sort of things but at the end of the day all those things have come in between them and their first love you know their passion their their focus has been shifted from loving him you know from going before him and drawing from him and working with him to working for him and he's drawing their attention to the fact that as important as it is for us or for them to work for him it is much much important for them to stay with him for or for them to work with him as i always say god has taught me now that you know as important as it is for me or for us to do things for him, mm -hmm. he is much, much more interested in having us first. Because if he has all our hearts, then 
He has all of us and we can do much, much more than having some of us and us doing some things for him. And therefore, we learned that it is important, even as he was talking to the church of Ephesus, to remember that he's also talking to us. Yeah. If the church of Ephesus can go through this process in time of losing their first love for him and for him to, out of mercy, out of his love, come back to remind them of what is going on because it will not end up them well. And that's the point we always make, that these programs that we are doing, these teachings that we are having, it's not about, you know, us trying to say that we know better than other people or we are better. No, 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 no. Indeed, we, 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 we are not perfect. Indeed, we have left, but we are not perfect. We are in our race. And it is important we all provoke ourselves to the love of God. As Apostle Paul says, the love of God compels us. Mm -hmm. And therefore, it is the love of God that is compelling us to share this truth and to do these teachings as by the grace of God, he, he, he raised our father up, Pastor Eric Amua, to start these programs or these platforms for us to together be aware of what the spirit of God wants us to know. Yeah. And to, as the Bible says, he is the one who will bring things to our remembrance. He's the one who is bringing these things to our remembrance. You know, yeah. that we, we will set up and pay attention. Because the days we find ourselves in, it's really dark. Great darkness is befalling the world. Yeah. And the things that are going on at times, if by God's grace, you have the spiritual eyes to understand what is going on, it, it is unbelievable. And therefore, we must pay attention to these things. Even as he says, he who has an ear, let him hear what the spirit of the Lord is telling the people. And so we learned that even as He's speaking to the church of Ephesus. He's speaking to us, his church, individuals, or as a corporate body or a local church. We must pay attention to these things. Just as in our families, we get married and through the business of life and the cares and the concerns of life, we tend to ignite um, neglect and ignore one another. And with time, if care is not taken, then we find that we are separating. Though we are married, we are separating. It's like we are living our own individual life. Whereas the Bible says the two will become one. But because we are neglecting and ignoring one another, that passion of love that we started the marriage with now is no more. Yeah. So that's the picture the Lord God Almighty or Jesus Christ is revealing unto us. And so we went on to... Um, to, to talk about some of the things, the signs that shows that we are living our first love, the early love, that passion that we had for Christ when we came to accept his love, accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. And we went through quite a few of them. One is when we delight and I say we because I'm part of the church too. And so when we delight in someone or something else more than 
we delight in the Lord Jesus Christ, then it's a sign that we are living our first love. The Bible encourages us in Psalm 34, uh, 37 verse 4, that we should delight in the Lord and he will give us the desires of our heart. The temptation is, most of the time, if care is not taken, we will delight in even the blessings of the Lord. We will delight to do things for him, but not who he is and what he has done for us. But he wants us to do things out of his love that we have received and from his love, not just because we have to do things. And so we should delight in the Lord, our God. So if we see that we are delighting in something or someone else more than our delight in the Lord, that is a sign that we are living our first love. As the Bible says, we should love the Lord, our God, with all our heart, with all our soul, and with all our strength. The, the second point we made was, if our soul does not long for times of rich fellowship with God in God's words and in prayer, and in worship as in songs of ad, 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 admiration and songs of praise, then it's a sign that we are living our first love. Mm -hmm. Thirdly, we, we talk about the fact that if our thoughts in leisure moments do not honor the Lord, then is also a sign as an individual or as a body or as a family, we are living um, our first love. When, when, when we read um, Mark chapter 12, verse 13, he said, we should love the Lord our God with all our soul, with all our soul and with all our mind. And therefore, our thought life, our thought life is very important. We should consider what we are thinking about and what we are thinking upon. As I read from Philippians chapter 4, verse 8 last week, it says, whatsoever things that are true, whatsoever things that are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, Whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things that are of good report, he says, think upon these things. And so our thought life determines whether we are living our first love or not. Um, the other point we made was we should if we are making excuses for doing things that displaces the Lord, claiming that we are only humans, then it's a sign that we are living our first love. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, many of us <clears throat> use our human nature to justify the things that we do that are wrong. But as much as we are human beings, by the grace of God too, he has put his spirit in us. He has made us to be a new creation through Christ and in Christ. He, am, he has made us to be his priests and his kings. He has put the same power that raised Jesus Christ from the death in us and upon us. And so we are not just human beings. And this is why it was important. And I appreciate some of this teaching that God under shepherd, Pastor Erica Moa has brought about through this desert evangelism. One being 
the, the, the believer's struggle with our identity. If we know who we have been made to be through Christ and in Christ, yeah. then there are certain things that we will not do. But because we are ignorant of our identity in Christ, we use every excuses and reasons to do things anyhow and to displace the Lord. Mm -hmm. And so one of the points that we did talk about was this, that we, we should not do things that displease the Lord, making excuses, and that we are claiming to be only humans because we are not humans. Romans chapter one verse, Romans um, chapter 12, verse one and two says, out of the mercy, out of the love of God, we should present ourselves as a living sacrifice unto him. He says, this is our reasonable service or worship to present ourselves, our body, our soul, and our mind as a living sacrifice unto him. And therefore, if we find ourselves making excuses that we are just human beings and we are doing things that displease the Lord, then we are living our first love. And we are giving the enemy of our faith, the devil, the opportunity to come into our life to steal, to kill, and to destroy. And so that was that point. And the other point that we, we did talk about is if we find that we are not willing and cheerful to give to the work of God and to the needs of other people, then we, we, it's a sign that we are, we are living or losing our first love, the love of God. Because as the Bible says, the Lord loves a cheerful giver. The Lord loves a cheerful giver. And he encourages us to give. He says it's more blessed to give than to receive. And when we read John 3.16, the common you know, Bible quotation, most believers we know, he says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. He didn't took from us, but he gave. And that's why he's called the most blessed. For if it is more blessed to give than to receive, and he is the one who is who has given more than any one, even to the extent of giving his life for our life, for our good, then he deserves that title, the most blessed. Mm -hmm. He is indeed the most blessed because he has been the one who has given good things unto his people and unto his world. Amen. Amen. And we move from that and we considered another point that if we cease to treat other people as the Lord will treat us or as we would treat the Lord, then our love for God is, you know, dissipating. Uh -huh. We are living our first love. If we fail to treat other people as the Lord wants us to treat them or as we will treat the Lord, then it means when, when we read John chapter 13, verse 34, it says, a new commandment I gave you, that you love one another. As I have loved you, so must you love one another. And so... As he has loved us, how has he loved us? He loved us unconditionally and sacrificially. And so with that same love, we must love first God. We must love him unconditionally and we must love him sacrificially. 
And likewise, we must love one another or other people unconditionally and sacrificially. Um, when we read um, 1 John chapter 4, verse 10 to 11, it says, Herein is love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propi propitiation for our sins or the um, atonement for our sin. Beloved, if we so if God so love us, we ought also to love one another. Amen. Amen. Um, the the other point that um we 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 had a look at was if we view God's commands as restriction to our happiness rather than an expression of his love for us, then we are living our first love. If we view God's commandment or Christ's commands as restriction to our happiness rather than expression of his love for us, then we are living our first love. So, when we read um, John chapter 14, verse 21, we read that he says, he that has my commandment and keep them, he is that love me. And he that love me shall be loved of my father and I will love him and will manifest myself to him. We see that obedience to his commandments brings true freedom and joy. If we really want to experience true freedom and joy, it's not about viewing his commandments as a restriction, by seeing his commandment as the pathway, as the basis to true freedom and joy. And so Jesus Christ himself said in John chapter 8, verse 31 to 32, he says, if you come to know of the truth, the truth will set you free. It's only the truth that we know deep within our hearts that sets us free, that brings joy and rest. Amen. Amen. Um, the other point that we look at was um, if we strive for affirmation, if we strive for affirmation from the world rather than approval from the Lord, then we are living our first life. It's a sign. If we seek approval of other people rather than the approval of the Lord God Almighty, then we are losing our first love. He said in John 15, chapter 19, he said, if ye were of the world, the world will love his own. But because ye are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world will hate you. And, and therefore, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world, as First John 2, 15 to 17 says. He says, if any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life, is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passes away, and the lust thereof. But he does, does the will of the Father abided forever. Amen. Amen. Um, the next point we look at was if we fail to make Christ or his world known because of the fear of rejection, then it means we are living our first love. If the love that Christ has revealed to us, the Bible say, oh, how great the love the Father has lavished on us. Mm -hmm. 
if our value is found in this great love, in the person and in the life of Jesus Christ, if we if we have come to find him to be the most important thing in the universe, if the message of the gospel of his love is the greatest message ever, and for the mere fact of lack of rejection, people rejecting us because we, we, we carry that message, the gospel message. And because of the fear of rejection, we are not sharing this message of great importance. This message that is greater than life, our individual life. I always say something like, if I have a cure, for example, for cancer, then I will go at any length to, to, to give it to people who are going through that misery or going through that illness of cancer. However, we have got a message greater of value than cancer. Mm -hmm. And if because of fear of men or rejection of men, we are not sharing this message, then we are not doing them any good. And we are not appreciating the value of the love of God in our life and for the life of other people. And so if we fail to make the message of the gospel Christ's word known because of fear of rejection or of anything else, because we are ashamed or whatsoever, then it's a sign that our love, we are living our first love. And, and even as we went through the church of Ephesus, we saw that once they came to accept Jesus Christ as their love, their, their Lord and Savior, they were willing to let go of any fear and to you know, bend their fetishes and to cut loose everything that was hindering them from you know, being with Christ and, and doing things for Christ. Likewise, we must not let the fear of men or uh, us being ashamed of the gospel, of the message, prevent us from sharing the good news. If we do, then it means it, it, um, we are living our first life. Our passion for Christ it, it is growing cold. And, and one of the things, even as I meditate on these scriptures this week, that in, it was in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1 going on, he says, in the last days, in the last days, people will become, you know, grow to be lovers of themselves rather than lovers of God. And Jesus Christ said in Matthew that because of lawlessness, because iniquity shall abound, the love of many will grow cold. When we read into that deeply, we will see that that iniquity or lawlessness that he's talking about is, you know, the um the 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 uh how should I put it? The the lusts and the desires of the flesh. You know, we go against the authority of the Lord God Almighty. And because most people and, and our culture and everything going on in the world is going against the authority of God and his word, many of us, even in the church, our love for him will grow cold. And so 
we must be careful not to let the things of the world and the things going on around us, the cares of the world and the concerns of life be an obstacle or a basis for our love to grow cold towards our Christ. That's the love, of, the love of creation rather than the creator. Oh, yes. Mm-hmm. Oh, yes. Yes. Very important Thank for you. Mm-hmm. And um, the other thing that we look upon is if we refuse to give up any activity that we know is an offense to a weaker brother, then our love for Christ is growing cold or we are living uh, because we must know that as a body of Christ, we are many. Though we are one, we are many. And therefore, if though, as Paul talked in um, Philippians about if he should eat a meat, that a believer who doesn't have the spiritual understanding, it will cause him an offense not to serve the Lord. He will gladly give it up. Oh, yeah. For the sake of the brother, you know, and therefore, if we are doing anything that will offend a brother who is weaker in the faith, a brother who has just received the Lord God Almighty and doesn't have much understanding, though we might be right, but because it will offend the person, we should gladly give it up for the sake of the life of that person. So meaning, so meaning that, that in that state uh, takes us to uh, denying ourselves. Exactly. Right? Deny ourselves for the kingdom. In other sense, mm-hmm. just like Christ also denied himself just exactly. for the sake of, 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 of the believers, for, mm-hmm. for those that are lost, to also exactly. be saved. Uh, mm-hmm. that, that he, he denied himself, he conformed with the with the love of God, with the will of the yeah. Father, with his mm-hmm. fellowship. Because mm-hmm. he said his, his flesh was willing to give away, but he mm-hmm. was encouraging the spirit. Why? Yeah. Because he had constant fellowship with the Father. That mm-hmm. intimacy, that fellowship that he had with the Father was one that constrained him yeah. uh, not to, to do the things that he wants to do for himself. Just mm-hmm. like uh, when he gave that authority to his disciples, to mm-hmm. go out there and preach the uh, gospel, and then they came back and uh, they were being disturbed. One mm-hmm. of the, the disciples was saying, "Should we call fire from heaven?" Why? Mm-hmm. Because they are mm-hmm. away from Elijah when Elijah called fire from heaven. But Jesus mm-hmm. Christ told them, that "You do not know the kind of spirit you have." Yes, uh, yeah. it, it, that, that is not for manifesting those kind of power. Mm-hmm. So it's it more or less like you have the authority, but yeah. you deny yourself. You know, even yeah. though you know it's a weapon that you can use. To, mm-hmm. to destroy the works of the enemy. You deny yeah. yourself just mm-hmm. for the fact that um, others can also be saved or can mm-hmm. put that kind of manifold light that you have to, within yourself for them to also exist in the body of, of God. Mm-hmm. That's, that's very interesting. Yeah. And so I- I- if we are not cultivating that habit and that attitude in our individual life, you know, uh, as Paul said, you know, we, we, we have the right to many things, but not many things are profitable unto us, mm-hmm. you know? And, and so it, it is good we cultivate that habit in our individual life, in our family life, and also in our local churches, you know? Be, and I believe I, that, that that's a big of a, a problem nowadays. Right, uh, that as you said through that scripture, I said, uh, in the uh, getting to the end, men will be lovers of themselves, yeah, right. Mm-hmm. Because when we come into the kingdom, mm-hmm. we, we taste of that God gives us his life. Mm-hmm. So, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, yeah, and whoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. Mm-hmm. So, you see, we come to taste of the life of God. So, mm-hmm. by by accepting that, that's why baptism also becomes very important in this kind of case. Because then, in true that baptism, we die and resurrect with mm-hmm. Him. That when we die with Him and resurrect with Him, it's no mm-hmm. more our life. Yeah, it's it's now become it now becomes the life of God Almighty Himself. Almighty but realize that now, uh, in the body of Christ, we realize that 
The reason why people are becoming lovers of themselves and neglecting the first love is the fact that mm-hmm. when we taste of the good life of God, mm-hmm. there's another aspect that we have to give up our life. Yeah. You see, where we have do, uh, our life and God life in us, mm-hmm. Romans tells us that there'll be a war because the yeah. spirit that lasts happens. after the flesh and the flesh yeah. also lasts after the spirit. We cannot do that. That's what I say. We cannot serve two masters. Yeah. You see, if either we submit to the will of God, that mm-hmm. is, that will only break down that flesh is by through in, uh, uh, fellowship, yeah. through constant relationship with the Father. That is our first love. Just mm-hmm. like when, when, when a man meets a woman, you yeah. deny yourself about everything that you think you, uh, you, you do for yourself. You, yeah. you go out, out trying to please, for, ex- uh, 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 for example, so trying to yeah. please mm-hmm. the woman, for the woman yeah. to see what you have, mm-hmm. that you can take yeah. care of them. When mm-hmm. you, the things that you do not show to ordinary people, you begin yeah. to show by your bank account, you begin mm-hmm. to show it there to show that you have that kind of life that you can use to support her. So yeah. we go far and wide mm-hmm. to cast out our nest for, yeah. for, for the, pe- the other person to see that, yes, this what that's how passionate you become. That's yeah. how we yeah, exactly. become, I'm drawn to, to that kind of love. Mm-hmm. So God expects us that when we come through that fellowship, that flesh has to be broken. It is only... Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Being in that fellowship, it is only being in that constant uh, fellowship with God that the yeah. flesh will give away, that we yes. will die to mm-hmm. our nature because then we yeah. put on that life that God right. has given us. So exactly. you realize that he tells us that we should not conform to the things of the world, Yeah, you see, but, but be transformed. It becomes a, a doing word. It becomes yeah. something that we, how do we become mm-hmm. transformed? So when we see him, we become like him. Yeah. How do yeah. we, see, we see him through the scriptures? We see yeah. him through our prayer life. We yeah. see him through our communication that we see. Yeah. By so and doing, our life experiences. And our life experiences. Mm-hmm. Uh, so by so doing, we, 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 that bonding that we have with God becomes stronger. And we lose ourselves, which yeah. is uh, the flesh nature, which becomes yeah. the fallen nature of man. Because mm-hmm. naturally, the fallen nature will not allow us mm-hmm. Exactly. See, that is what makes us become lovers of our own self mm-hmm. because it, what the flesh wants is I, I, yeah. I, I, I. It's all yeah. about me. But mm-hmm. in God, there is a self denial because yeah. God Himself did not withhold His Son. He could have yeah. with, withheld His Son from us, but mm-hmm. God did not withhold His Son from us. Mm-hmm. He freely gave unto us. So if God yeah. freely gave unto us, so mm-hmm. are we supposed to freely give, come out of ourselves for, 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 for naturally. We mm-hmm. are not, remember the, the last teaching we did on the man of God. The we we are naturally God. not of the flesh. It is yeah. our fallen nature that has put us, put us in that category. So he yeah. said the second Adam, which is Jesus Christ, is That's a life-giving true. spirit. You see, yeah. the first Adam was created of the soul. Mm-hmm. You see, so, so the devil, that's what the, the, the Bible talks about, uh, selling our soul. So yeah. the, the first Adam sold his soul to, to, to the devil. Yeah. So by... by giving away what we had. But when he was in, in God, you see, mm-hmm. God was brought him into that life. So because yeah. the first Adam could not keep that life, yeah. God had to send that his son who was in his express image, his likeness, mm-hmm. and had that glory within him to be able to exhibit in this world. That's why Jesus Christ was not a man who lived for himself. He yeah. said, if you, you read in the Bible, in the scriptures, you get to a point, you said that he had compassion upon the people and mm-hmm. he healed them all. Why? Yeah. Because it, it was, he was out of his flesh. Mm-hmm. You see, mm-hmm. the devil could not defeat that after he, he, even though he was hungry in the wilderness and yeah. uh, for the fasting, uh, for the 40 days, and fasting, days. the devil could not go over because what? Now he allowed the spirit of God through fellowship establishing mm-hmm. he was in contact with that first love that yeah. he was able to to deny himself so coming yeah. into christ we must deny ourselves yeah. by that constant fellowship through yeah. the life-giving spirit which is in jesus mm-hmm. christ amen. amen 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 and and that 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 shows you as christ is our pattern man you know as, as the way or the pathway to him being the messiah yeah it's also our pathway. It's the same way. If we should truly call ourselves to be followers of Christ, yeah. then we must go through that pathway. As he denied himself and take on upon himself the cross, likewise, we must deny ourselves and take on our cross. Yeah. Only in denying ourselves and taking upon ourselves our cross that we follow him. Yeah. 
you cannot follow him without you not denying yourself and taking your cross. Mm -hmm. Then you are not this, his follower. Yeah. You see? And so that, that, that's the other point. And the other point we saw was when we become complacent towards sinful conditions around us, we compromise, you know? We, we become, oh, as if it's, it's nothing. We become complacent. Then the love that we, we have is growing cold because we know you cannot love God and love sin. Yeah. You can only love God and hate sin. Mm -hmm. For God hates sin. Though he is loving, he hates sin. Yeah. And therefore, when we become complacent and compromising any form of sin in our life, then our love for him is growing cold. The yeah. other point was if we are unwilling to forgive those who offend us. I think we have talked much about this one because forgiveness is the basis of our re-coming back to the, the Lord God Almighty, of our salvation. And therefore, if freely we have received the forgiveness of, of sin, how much more are we not supposed to forgive one another? And therefore, when we hold on to offenses or people's sins against us and we are not ready to forgive them and to let go, then it shows that the love, our first love, is growing cold. Mm -hmm. And so that were some of the things that, but we read that the Lord says that we should remember as we read in Revelation chapter 2, verse 4, as it's rest, verse 5, he said, remember the height from which you have fallen. Repent and do the things you did at first. If you do, if you do not repent, I will come to you and remove your lampstand from its place. You see, I believe, as I was saying last week, this is one of the ways God shows mercy unto us. But it's one of the ways God purifies his church. The Lord God Almighty, Jesus Christ, is coming soon. And he is not coming for a bride with spot and blemishes. The Bible says he's coming for a bride without spot and blemishes. And so he does everything through the Holy Spirit in partnership with his word to prepare his bride, yeah. to purify us from yeah. those things that make us have spot and blemishes. And therefore, in this message, he's telling us to remember where we started falling and to repent and to go back to our first love. You know, it is in that sequence that we fully come back into his first love and that we fully get purified. And therefore, we saw, as, as he, he said, or he made mention, we should remember, remember, remember what? We should remember the love of God that was shed for us. We should remember his goodness who he is, all that he has done for us. And he continued to do and he will do for us. Secondly, we should repent. We should have that change of mind mm -hmm. and in direction, in the direction that we are going. If we are unforgiving, we should turn to be forgiving people. And I think our brother, Emmanuel, you, you, you can say a little bit about the repentance for us. Yeah, uh, it, it, unfortunately the time is passed, when, but uh, we need a minute to can say, as we were saying, repentance, it all boils down to repentance. Repentance becoming the focal point 
to which uh, there will be a turnaround. Uh, God is not just reprimanding them. He commended them, but he has mm-hmm. something like I said. If, if God is coming to the church of Ephesus and telling them to repent, and then that their candle, uh, their, their candle stand will be taken away from them. It's a serious uh, 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 implications upon them. Yes. Hallelujah. Mm-hmm. And, and he's talking about the church here. So we see repentance uh, 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 brings us back into the light. You know, mm-hmm. when, when you're straying somewhere, uh, when you're straying the wrong direction and you do not get anyone to correct you back, mm-hmm. it, it's very it's very dangerous. So God mm-hmm. looking at the church, which he is the head of, mm-hmm. uh, He's seeing these kinds of uh, mistakes that is going on in there. So he apprehends them and, and begins to correct them. As we always say, the word of God is for uh, rebuking, correction, and for teachings. So yeah. he himself is now teaching the people the way that they are supposed to go. But mm-hmm. for the sake of time, uh, as you have said, repentance is the changing of your mind. That's why he's saying that remember, remember, remember the height from which you are falling. Yeah. The other translation is said the Lucifer fall. So it is a yeah. very big thing that we want to talk about. It's going to take yeah. back for the time sake. Mm-hmm. Let us let us change our mind from what we have heard mm-hmm. and remember mm-hmm. in our own life. Let us be self-conscious about it and then think about where we are falling from and what God mm-hmm. wants us to do from there. Mm-hmm. From mm-hmm. this disassociating ourselves from our first love to whom mm-hmm. that we, we have to have constant fellowship with and go back to him for him mm-hmm. to teach us. It's only by being with our first love that we yeah. can do the will of God and do, mm-hmm. it, do it in accordance to how he wants it. Hallelujah. Mm-hmm. So we thank God Almighty for such another time. And hopefully next week, uh, God willing, we'll come with you again, this is evangelism, mm-hmm. and we'll look at the repentance and from the, from the height from which we are falling. But this morning, we want to give the opportunity to all those that are out there. If you're a believer, if you're a non-believer that is watching at this moment, I want you to just examine yourself this moment from what you have learned from the, the, the direction of the Holy Spirit through our brother Isaac that he has shared to us this moment. If there's steady heights from which you are falling from, if there's uh, if there's a way that, that he said there's a way that seems right to man, but the end of the destruction. You see, we, we think sometimes we are doing the will of God, but we are falling away from him because why we are not, we have not been seeking. If you can ask now, when was the last time some of us even opened our Bible? One was yeah. the last went on knees to pray to the Father. Mm-hmm. These are all signs. Of, yeah. and, of that, and, that's, and that's and that's and that's the first works he was talking about. The first yeah. words he's talking about is the the prayer moments. You know, the Bible studies, the fasting, and you know, that's those kind of intimate thing. But now you go to church and during time of worship and praises. You see people are not, you know, paying attention. They are not even coming, you know, and whatsoever. And at times it bothers me even to find, you know, church leaders, pastors, you know, they come to the main auditorium after the worship has been done. You know, and that's that's the time of personal, you know, worship, adoration, admiration, you know, to your God in your presence. So as I brother I say, so it, it is it is all these things you have to take to remembrance. We have to sit down and remember, let us go back, let us think about this. And for those of us who have not yet believed in Christ, this opportunity is a time for you to ask us the reason why. God is calling you that of us that we are in the world. There's a reason why the Bible says we are in the world. We should not be of the world. We should be renewed in our thinking. We are falling from the states that God put us in. So this moment, I just want you to pray and ask the Holy Spirit to show you forth where you are falling from. He's the only one that knows our yesterday and our tomorrow. He's the only one that can draw us back to that focal point from which we are falling from. He's the only one that can bring into remembrance. Mm-hmm. The essence of our calling in our life. So yeah. this woman, be you a believer, be you a non-believer, just ask God, the Holy Spirit, to, to, to show you for where you are falling from, to open the eyes of your understanding yeah. and, and, and show you the way to go for that. You yes. and your household as well will mm-hmm. come into the enlightenment of God, will come to know him more and more and live for him. Just ask him in a few minutes, just a one minute, just pray and ask the Holy Spirit to correct your heart. The ways you should wash and brought with us from you. And things that make you remembrance, Father. Remember, 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 remember,
Father, we thank you, Lord, for such an opportunity. Thank you for such a moment. He wants to get over, Father, for bringing your rich word unto us, both the Gentiles and both the Jews, Heavenly yeah. Father, and bringing us together in as making us one people that are new in you to the kingdom of Heavenly Father. We thank you for your revelation this morning. And for your greatness that you want to show unto us, O oh God. Commit the rest of our week into your hands, into your hands, Father. Lead us steady, O oh God, and guide us, O oh God. And bless mm-hmm. our lives, Heavenly Father. Bless the handwork of your people, O oh God, and touch them every area of their lives, Heavenly Father. And we'll go first, O oh God, and manifest your, your will and manifest your purpose, O oh God, in the life of others, O oh God, that our lives, O oh God, will so shine forth, O oh God, that man just and glorify your holy name mm-hmm. and give glory and honor unto you. We thank you for mm-hmm. what you have done, for what you are about to do. May your name forever be glorified and exalted in the mighty name of Jesus we pray. Amen. 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 God bless you, all listeners. Uh, this is the end of this desert evangelism. Hopefully, God willing, next week we'll be here with you, same time, 11 a.m. Eastern time. Uh, to meet again with the peace of God that surpasses to understand the rest with you and your Amen. entire household. God bless you and have Absolutely. a blessed week. See you next week. Bye-bye. Yeah. Bye bye. Bye.